Purdue Pharma announcing this morning what they're calling an agreement in principle on a landmark opioid litigation settlement. Of course, uh, Purdue, the maker of OxyContin, number one on the hit list when you think about the potential uh, or the um, those responsible for or being held responsible for the horrible opioid crisis that has engulfed this country over the last decade, some 400,000 or more deaths at this point. Um, Overnight, the company getting the settlement with 24 separate state AGs. Now, remember, there already has been a settlement with two other states, but there are 24 states that have not yet signed on. Uh, and this morning, the company's chairman, Steve Miller, uh, who's been there a little over a year or so, sat down with me in an interview to explain why this is an important moment and why he's hopeful that he can convince any number of other state AGs to eventually join said settlement. Take a listen. This is a fork in the road. There's two choices here. One is to uh, implement this settlement, which means we have to get more states uh, beyond the 24 that we already have. And uh, we'll be working on that starting today. Uh, but the other choice is instead to revert to the litigation and we could expend all of the resources of the company battling all these lawsuits. We think the best answer is put the company on the table, uh, have a settlement so that all of the value can, as soon as possible, go to the unfortunate victims of the opioid crisis. Right. Uh, now, a key part of the um, resistance of some of the uh, state attorneys general, at least judging from this morning even, since you announced uh, the bankruptcy and the settlement, is the Sacklers' contribution overall. Yeah. How much are the Sacklers contributing to this settlement? The Sacklers are contributing, first off, the entire value of this company, which we think is the, the company is worth three and a half, and the plan to... Con three and a half billion. Three and a half billion, and the plan to uh, uh, provide free or at cost uh, uh, rescue drugs uh, amounts to about four billion, conservatively estimated. That's over a period of obviously many yeah. years. So, so there's uh, 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 you know seven or eight billion just from their the Sacklers' contribution of the company. On top of that, they're putting up three billion from their uh, other uh, investments and resources, uh, guaranteed, and. On top of that, a, the lion's share of the proceeds from selling off their overseas pharmaceutical businesses. Uh, there are some people who will never be satisfied, but the only way to test that would be to revert to litigation and expend all of the resources that are available on litigation instead of on helping communities that have suffered. So the idea again is? The bankrupt Purdue will uh, get a judge to agree to this plan. The hope, of course, is beginning today, and you heard Mr. Miller discussing it, that other states will join along, uh, that it will be approved by a bankruptcy judge, that then, eventually, Purdue will emerge from bankruptcy but exist, basically run by these trustees who will, uh, it will run as a not-for-profit company that is going to fund the various treatments and whatnot uh, for, and continue to make Oxycontin, by right. the way, for, you know, they've stopped marketing, they don't have a sales force, but, uh, and that's the plan. We'll see. This morning, and judging from all the statements, and, uh, you know, we, we had a, a lot longer interview, uh, which, by the way, you can see on uh, CNBC.com, the entirety of the interview. But the, the statements from the state AGs are the Sacklers aren't paying enough. Uh, really? And it's simple as that, and they want them to pay more. You saw the story over the weekend, about a billion dollars worth of wire transfers. The New York State AG says they've identified in terms of the Sacklers taking money out of the country. So it's, it's early days here, but Purdue obviously is filing for bankruptcy and hoping this settlement is going to stick. What's Mr. Miller's, uh, who's a, one of the great turnaround agents of our time, what is his relationship with the Sacklers? You know, I asked that, Jim, and it was unclear to me. Uh, you know, he obviously works for the company or took over the company that is a Sackler company, but uh, it, the board is now completely separate. And the management, to the extent it is as well, is separate. Um, but he had to negotiate with them about their contribution beyond, obviously, the company itself, but the cash contribution coming from the Sackler family. Aren't litigation costs at this point? Um, 
Dif difficult, painful? I mean, what, what leverage do they have to fight this in court? They, I mean, well, his point is, if we keep fighting, we're going to use all the money up that we want to put in, essentially, to help the states most affected by the opioid crisis in terms of both treatment, in terms of, you heard him talking about those drugs that can, uh, that can be helpful. Uh, and so he's, that's, the, that's the main point. It's like, why spend it all on litigation? We're going to have as much as we ever have right, right. now. Well, I don't know. I mean, I just think, why are they still making this stuff? Well, fun it does have a, I mean, it does okay. have a, you right. don't believe so. No. Even Jay, for, you Jay know, Jay certain cancer, Jay. certain terribly painful I, I think so. I wish diseases. it would be cannabis. But there's J&J &J getting sued, and they would tell you the same thing. And they're on the hook for doing something that they think is good. Obviously, the lawyers don't think so. They're way this far.